Hi, I am Stephen Rathgeb Smith, Executive Director of the American Political Science Association. I would like to welcome everyone to APSA's annual award ceremony. This ceremony is truly one of the highlights of the APSA annual meeting and the entire year and vividly highlights top notch, cutting edge research on politics and governance, excellence in teaching political science and the major public service achievements of our members. I am very much looking forward to the presentation of the awards. So let me introduce the president of the American Political Science Association, Paula McLean, the James B. Duke Distinguished Professor of Political Science, the Dean of the Graduate School, and the Vice Provost for Graduate Education at Duke University. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Welcome to all into this first ever virtual award ceremony at the American Political Science Association. Today, we celebrate outstanding achievements in publishing, teaching, doctoral dissertations, and more. It is right that in attendance today are not only our award winners, but also their family, friends, colleagues, and advisors. Thank you. I would also like to thank the many colleagues who served on this year's award committees. Many of you have worked collaboratively, read dozens of books, dissertations, papers, or recommendation files, and have taken time to carefully select tonight's awardees. I am grateful for all the work you have put in to this important endeavor. It is a tradition that the APSA president presents the winner of the Kenneth Sherrill Prize, and it is my pleasure to do so. The Kenneth Sherrill Prize, established with support from longtime APSA member, Dr. Ken Sherrill, is a pre-dissertation award recognizing the best doctoral dissertation proposal for an empirical study of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender issues in political science. We are excited to award Christopher Velasco of the University of Texas at Austin with the Kenneth Sherrill Prize because of his dissertation projects, substantial contributions to the social scientific study of LGBT plus movements. Moving beyond progress narratives concerning the development of rights, Velasco examines the collision between LGBT plus and anti-LGBT plus movements, which produces a variety of policy outcomes with tremendous effects on marginalized people's day-to-day -day lives. He argues that LGBT plus transnational advocacy networks precipitated homophobic advocacy networks. Networks focused on family, anti-imperialism, and children, FAIC networks mobilized in order to frame LGBT plus rights as threats to nationalism and family values. LGBT plus advocacy networks in part fueled homophobic animus and provided conservative and nationalistic actors with legitimacy for their homophobic policies and bases to organize FAIC networks. Velasco provides a novel theoretical framework that allows us to better understand how competing networks produce varying policy outcomes. In particular, the framework points out how LGBT plus and FAIC networks both can be embedded in a society, creating contestation and intense competition regarding sexuality norms and public policy. Examples of these societies include Italy, South Africa, and the United States. Velasco plans to unpack the contestation in these societies using a variety of data sources across multiple time periods, including content analysis of media sources, as well as comparative policy analysis. We expect that these analyses will produce both compelling quantitative analyses and case study analyses. Congratulations, Christopher. Now, I am pleased to introduce Janet Box Steffensmeyer, Vernal Reif Professor of Political Science and Professor of Sociology and APSA President-Elect to present the rest of the awards. Thank you, Paula and Steve. I am so excited to celebrate the accomplishments 
of our colleagues and friends tonight at the American Political Science Association's premier event. It's important to pause, reflect on those accomplishments, and also to celebrate. So please join me by first starting with the dissertation awards. Our first award is the Gabriel A. Almond Award for the best doctoral dissertation in the field of comparative politics and is presented to Rachel Swartz of the University of Wisconsin-Madison for her dissertation, Civil War, Institutional Change, and the Criminalization of the State in Central America. This theoretically innovative dissertation asks an important how question, how does civil war shape state development in the long run? Schwartz argues that civil war introduces predatory rules of the game that undermine core state functions. Civil wars thus undermine state institutions not by destroying them, but by introducing alternative institutional arrangements that undermine existing rules. The mechanism that Swartz carefully outlines with the case of three different administrative domains in Guatemala and Nicaragua is that the context of escalating insurgent threat, counterinsurgent elites, gain discretionary power, create institutions that serve narrow interest. The thesis offers an original and substantive argument about the relationship between civil war and state weakness. Swartz adopts a comparative institutional approach across sectors and countries and relies on extended field work to provide readers with a thick description of cases and use of interviews combined with process tracing, comparative case study, and historical research to advance persuasive argument. The thoughtful research design, the multi-method empirical strategy, and the careful analysis of evidence represent the highest quality work in our field. The committee particularly noted the extensive field work over 20 months in Guatemala and Nicaragua. This research yielded an empirically rich dissertation theorizing wartime institutional change. It was refreshing to see such a careful study centered on Central America, a region underrepresented in current studies in the field with findings that extend beyond Latin America. Congratulations, Rachel. The William Anderson Award is given for the best doctoral dissertation in the general field of federalism or intergovernmental relations, state and local politics. This year's award is presented to James Strickland of the University of Michigan for multi-client lobbying in the American states. Multi-client lobbying in the American states tackles the topic by bringing theoretical innovation and ambitious data collection from the US states to understand why groups seek to hire lobbyists who advocate for multiple clients and the implications for interest representation. The dissertation first develops a measure of multi-client lobbying and then examines how legislative institutions and lobbying laws contribute to this type of advocacy activity. Strickland finds that these contextual conditions matter less than group-specific factors. In particular, public interest groups seeking collective benefits such as environmental protection, government ethics, and criminal justice reform are more likely to hire single client advocates in order to maintain ongoing lobbying presence in the legislature and internal credibility with members or other stakeholders. Finally, the dissertation turns back to institutional conditions by examining the revolving door showing that the value of hiring a former legislator to lobby lessens where member turnover is high, demonstrating an important caveat to our knowledge about the revolving door that has been based mostly on evidence from the US Congress. The dissertation presents an ideal case of comparative state analysis. It treats states as intrinsically important venues for policymaking activity that affects group interests while leveraging institutional and legal variation in theoretically informed ways, which can transport to other levels and systems of government. The committee congratulates Strickland on making a sophisticated contribution to interest group theory while addressing an aspect of practical politics that has implications for all areas of state level public policy. Congratulations, James. The Edwin S. Corwin Award is given for the best doctoral dissertation in the field of public law and is presented to Tommaso Pavin of Princeton University for Ghost Writers, Lawyers and the Politics Behind the Judicial Construction of Europe. This dissertation convincingly argues that the main theories of European legal integration got it wrong at the micro level. The engines of integration were not ambitious national judges eager to challenge their own governments and judicial superiors by invoking European law, 
and referring questions to the Court of Justice of the European Union. Instead, he shows national judges more often try to avoid the European route due to excessive workload, insufficient understanding of European law, and constraints stemming from their role in the national judiciary. Drivers of integration through law were often the Euro lawyers, a relatively small group of activist lawyers who sought out suitable clients willing to break national law and who cajoled reluctant local judges into activating the EU court. He demonstrates nuances to his own story through the shifting role of lawyers over time and the uneven geographic integration of EU law, depending on local economic circumstances. This is a remarkable dissertation in terms of theory development, research design, scope, and style. Besides rewriting the history of European legal integration, the ghost writers also makes important contributions to theories of legal mobilization and political lawyering beyond the European Union. He builds his narrative on a set of carefully selected case studies and on a wide variety of data and methods, including archival studies, geospatial analysis, and more than 350 interviews in Italy, France, and Germany. His way of communicating qualitative fieldwork is unprecedented. Stories are told by long excerpts of conversations, by pictures and by descriptions of the courtrooms and crowded office spaces that carry a literary quality. The narrative is so persuasive because the judges and lawyers can speak directly to the reader. It is a dissertation of the highest quality. Congratulations. The Harold D. Laswell Award is given for the best doctoral dissertation in the field of policy studies and is supported by the Policy Studies Organization. The award is presented to Shirin Victoria Shen of Stanford University for Political Pollution Cycle, An Inconvenient Truth and How to Break It. This outstanding dissertation provides a model of important public policy scholarship grounded in political science. This work exemplifies the ideals of the Laswell Award in several respects. By providing a compelling novel explanation for variation in air quality over time, this dissertation tackles an important timely policy puzzle. Air pollution constitutes the largest current environmental problem facing the global community with impacts that reverberate across jurisdictions and policy domains. By considering and combining multiple policy goals with frontline implementers' career incentives, the author expands on the conventional principal agent approach to implementation in novel and useful ways. This dissertation marshals a truly impressive original data set and deploys a novel empirical strategy. This work both offers a new approach to measuring air quality over time and seriously integrates its archival material and interviews into the analysis. The dissertation also stands as a model for how to use political science theory to help explain policy problems and holds real promise of having broad impact well beyond environmental policy and in many geographic contexts outside of the dissertation's main focus of China. Congratulations. The E.E. E. Schatzschneider Award is given for the best doctoral dissertation in the field of American government. This year's award is presented to John Dearborn of Yale University for the Representative Presidency. In this exhaustive and illuminating dissertation, John Dearborn investigates how a singular idea, namely, that presidents uniquely represent national interests has shaped not only our understanding in the American presidency, but the efforts of legislators to remake it. This notion of presidential representation, as Dearborn calls it, became powerful enough to convince members of Congress to grant the president broad agenda setting authority over the budget, trade, federal bureaucracy, and domestic economy. His thorough research and sharp analysis helped solve the historical puzzle of why bipartisan congressional majorities became willing to cede wide policy-making capacity to an increasingly powerful executive branch during the first half of the 20th century. After the presidential scandals of the 1960s and 70s, however, the idea of the representative president lost its purchase on Capitol Hill and legislators, not coincidentally, became less deferential to executive autonomy. The representative presidency is much more than an accounting of legislative debate, however. It is a tribute to the power of ideas in American politics and the ongoing and contested efforts of successive generations of politicians to grapple with constitutional legacies. Responding to previous scholarship that often treated 
presidential congressional relations as a mere product of partisan allegiances and ideological commitments, Dearborn convincingly shows that ideas about representation and form matter in politics, and that these ideas have lasting consequences for the design of our nation's most powerful political office. Congratulations, John. The Leo Strauss Award is given for the best doctoral dissertation in the field of political philosophy and is co-presented this time to Elena Gambino of the University of Minnesota for Presence in Our Own Land, Second Wave Feminism and the Lesbian Body Politic, and Tejos Prasher of the University of Chicago for Self-Rule in the State in Indian Political Thought, 1880 to 1950. Presence in Our Own Land is deftly argued and exciting intervention in and contribution to contemporary political theory and the history of feminist thought. Persuasively challenging dominant narratives of progress, according to which second wave feminists engaged in exclusionary politics of identity that were corrected by subsequent generations of feminist thinkers, Elena shows how lesbian feminists, beginning in the late 1970s, theorized and practiced a deep intersectional politics, one that rested not on essentializing identity categories, but on structures, relationships, and institutions capable of promoting coalition building as a form of publicity. To recover the diverse views and writers shaping second wave lesbian feminism, presence in our own land turns to the pages of Sinister Wisdom, 1976 to the present, a lesbian feminist magazine of poems, stories, essays, visual art, as well as reflection and self-assessment. Providing important historical context, this rich archive brings to light ongoing debates about racism, separatism, and political strategy. Debates that reveal how contestation, specifically between black and white lesbian feminists, fundamentally informed the contours and substance of the movement. Gambino theorizes a practice of coalition politics premised not on harmony and inclusion, but on confrontation with persistent issues of inequality and broken trust, accountability and repair. Presence in our own land contributes critical conceptual resources to the field of political theory while offering exceptionally timely strategies for any politics committed to solidarity across difference. Self-rule in the state in Indian political thought, 1880 to 1950, is an insightful and illuminating contribution to comparative political theory and the history of political thought. Through historical analysis, he reconstructs the discourse of self-rule in British India between 1880 and 1950, showing how, in a challenge to notions of parliamentary supremacy inherited from the French Revolution and held by leaders of the Indian National Congress, a diverse group of political thinkers advocated for new forms of political representation and economic control beyond European conceptions of the unitary nation state based on the distribution of lawmaking powers among central, local, and imperial legislative bodies. Against longstanding analyses of the demand for self-rule in British India as a demand for centralized state-based sovereignty independent of imperial control, self-rule in the state valuably brings to light the important content and political and economic stakes of the argument among Indian political thinkers between divided versus unitary forms of popular sovereignty. Drawing on an impressive archive, including assembly debates between 1946 and 1950, leading up to the drafting of India's post-colonial constitution, he demonstrates that even though the Indian founding represented a triumph of unified governance, critiques of unitary sovereignty, along with their visions of socialist politics as alternatives to both Western European welfare states, as well as the Soviet model of planning, were central to anti colonial thinking of self-rule. This dissertation provides critical intellectual resources for the study of decolonization in political and legal theory, global history, and international law, while paving the way for new configurations of post-colonial sovereignty and popular rule. Congratulations to both of you. The Mercy Tate Award is given for the best doctoral dissertation in the field of international relations, law, and politics. The award is presented to Eric Lynn Greenberg of Columbia University for Remote Controlled Restraint, the Effects of Remote Warfighting Technology on Crisis Escalation. 
Lynn Greedberg's dissertation is an impressive look at an age old question of how changes in technology affect the risks and conduct of war. Lynn Greenberg's focus is on the innovation of drones and whether that technology makes it more or less likely for tensions to escalate into war. Theory points in many different directions. Scholars and policymakers have thought that technologies that make war easier will also lubricate the process of crisis escalation. Lynn Greenberg takes a fresh look at this issue, building new theory and testing those theoretical ideas with diverse methods. On the substance, the dissertation stands out for novelty. Lynn Greenberg argues that easier war making does indeed escalate the use of force, but the lack of humans on the platforms means that when shots are fired, the need for reprisals is greater. War fighting goes up and down, but it is also easier for militaries to keep things in check. Notably, this dissertation offers a model that can be replicated by scholars looking at other technologies and with other empirical tools. That is a gold standard for political science scholarship, new directions in theory, clever combinations of methods well aligned to testing theory, and transparent writing so that others can learn and build upon. This dissertation was selected for the award on its own merits of relevance, importance, and quality. The award committee also notes that the topic reflects Tate's interest in the role of weapons and peace, topics she wrote about in the late 1940s, as the world grappled with the need to cap the volcano of weapons and the impacts of new weapons on the risks of war. Congratulations, Eric. The Leonard D. White Award is supported by the University of Chicago and is given for the best dissertation in the field of public administration. This year, we present it to Angela Young Sheen Park of the University of Kansas for Beyond Adoption, the influence of local institutional arrangements on sustainability policy implementation and management. Dr. Park's dissertation examines the role that institutional arrangements play in supporting the successful implementation of sustainability programs by local governments. As the dissertation explains, sustainability initiatives aim to simultaneously advance economic, environmental, and equity goals. The importance of sustainability efforts and the risk that they may fail due to challenging cross-department collaborations that they typically require make it important to study which factors correlate to successful sustainability policy implementation. Dr. Park's dissertation studies this question through three papers, which respectively focus on the policy implementation stage, the policy evaluation stage, and the use of performance information in sustainability management. The dissertation makes contributions to research on public management and collaborative governance, and the findings also have the potential to inform the practice of public administration in local government. The committee was also impressed by the close fit between the research question that each chapter set out to investigate and the data analysis used and the clear writing site style throughout. Congratulations, Angela. We continue with the awards for papers and articles during the past calendar year. The Franklin L. Burdett Pi Sigma Alpha Award is given for the paper presented at the previous annual meeting. This year's award is presented to Kristen Gao of Gothenburg University and Mara Redlick Revkin of Georgetown University for Retribution and Reconciliation, Attitudes Toward Rebel Collaborators in Iraq. This paper addresses critically important but difficult to study questions about what determines citizens' post-conflict attitudes about the punishment of and leniency towards people who collaborated with rebel groups during periods of civil violence. Leveraging a survey experiment that they conducted in Iraq after a three-year occupation by the Islamic State, the authors find that respondents who prioritize collaborators' roles rather than their identity characteristics when they weigh punishment and forgiveness. Surprisingly, they also find that preferences for retribution are largely invariant to personal exposure to political violence. This work combine, combines pressing policy relevance for peace building in Iraq with strong research design and a novel theoretical frame that has general applications to work on justice. By emphasizing the preferences of everyday victims of rebel violence rather than national politics, they focus our attention on a poorly understood but critical constituency in the process of post-conflict peace building. 
They also conceptualize collaboration broadly, eschewing a common tendency to study only the most violent forms of collaboration. We expect this work to resonate widely with both scholars and practitioners interested in post-conflict justice and peace building. Congratulations, Kristen and Mara. The Heinz Ulau Award, supported by Cambridge University Press, honored the best articles published in our best journals, the American Political Science Review and Perspectives on Politics. The awardee for best article in the American Political Science Review is George Kaku Ofsu of the London School of Economics and Political Science for Do Fairer Elections Increase the Responsiveness of Politicians? He combines careful theoretical argumentation with novel experimental designs to examine whether high quality elections increase political responsiveness. Within the context of Ghana, he shows that when elections are monitored and thus become fairer, politicians cannot win elections through outright manipulation. This in turn incentivizes candidates to invest resources into meeting the needs and gaining the support of their constituents. He analyzes 2,160 months of constituency development fund spending of legislators by randomly assigning election day monitoring during Ghana's 2012 elections. The sophisticated experiment in the field design enables him to draw causal conclusions for politicians. He carefully discusses external validity and generalizability of his findings. The selection committee deemed this very impressive and worthy article that combines careful theoretical work with the sophisticated research design that allows causal inference and extensive data collection. The article generates important and interesting academic results that are at the core of political science, but also have real world implications and offer relevant policy recommendations. Congratulations, George. The committee for the ULAO Award for the best article published in Perspective on Politics confers the award to the article, Who Participates in Local Government? Evidence from Meeting Minutes by Catherine Levine Einstein, David M. Glick, and Maxwell Palmer, all of Boston University. They address an existing debate about how institutions, by facilitating community participation, can mitigate political inequalities in who participates in local government. They explore new aspects of this question by compiling a unique data set which registers thousands of instances of citizens speaking at planning and zoning board meetings concerning housing development and match these individuals to voter files. On this basis, they show that participation is unrepresentative and that those who self-select into engaging in these debates are more prone to oppose new housing construction. They conclude that these participatory inequalities may contribute to rising housing costs and that this has generally been overlooked by those who see this kind of community participation as a buffer against political inequality. The selection committee found this very impressive article which codes new data and arrives at interesting findings with important real world conclusions. It clearly presents a huge amount of work and has solicited a lot of interest already whether measured by downloads or citations. This is the kind of work Perspective on Politics was created to showcase. Strong on an important question, which advances knowledge in a way of interest to specialists, but written in a way that is transparent and broadly accessible. Congratulations, Katie, David, and Max. We now turn to the book awards. The Ralph J. Bunch Award is given for the best scholarly work in political science that explores the phenomenon of ethnic and cultural pluralism. This year's winner is Davin Phoenix for his book, The Anger Gap, How Race Shapes Emotion in Politics. For decades, scholars of political participation have argued that the low levels of African-American participation in a wide variety of domains, such as turnout, contacting officials, donating, volunteering, and attending meetings reflects the relative dearth of African-American civic skills and socioeconomic measures when compared to white Americans. In The Anger Gap, How Race Shapes Emotion in Politics, Phoenix investigates the role that emotions, most notably anger, play in accounting for the racial divide in political participation in the United States. Drawing on insights from African-American political thought, history, political communication, psychology, and political science, and employing a multi-method approach, Phoenix argues that the racial divide and participation is a reflection of the gap between African-Americans and whites in the mobilizing emotion of anger. 
Phoenix def definitely shows how the stereotype of the angry black man or woman has and continues to preclude African Americans from accessing, expressing, and employing the emotion of anger, an emotion that has been used successfully as a tool by white Americans to mobilize political support among elected officials to affect beneficial political change. According to Phoenix, the result of this anger gap in public opinion is continued racial inequality in the US and the lack of receptivity to African American political demands by elected officials. The anger gap, how race shapes emotion politics is a nuanced, encompassing, and thorough analysis of African American public opinion, thought, and political behavior in the 21st century. His argument considering the mobilizing and transformative effect of anger in US politics is timely and important as evidenced by the emergence, spread, and influence of the Black Lives Matters movement. The committee unanimously agreed that in line with the tenets of the Ralph J. Bunch Award, that this book not only breaks new ground in the empirical and scholarly study of African-American public opinion, but assists the public in better understanding the nature and origins of a contemporary African-American-led social movement that seeks to establish the social justice, equality, and protections promised in a nation's founding documents and most cherished values. Congratulations. The Ralph A. Dahl Award is awarded annually to an untenured scholar who has produced scholarship of the highest quality on the subject of democracy. This year's awardee is Ashley E. Nichols for her book, Power, Participation, and Protest in Flint, Michigan, Unpacking the Policy Paradox of Municipal Takeovers. This book exemplifies the model of Dahl's inquiry into local politics to illuminate how democracy does or does not function to serve its citizens. Nichols dives into the emergency takeover and water crisis in Flint, Michigan to demonstrate how technical and managerial arms of the government use moments of emergency to avoid accountability and diminish democracy. This book speaks powerfully to contemporary global politics of emergency health management and the broader role of autocratic technical solutions in place of democratic responsiveness. It could not be more salient and timely as we face national and international questions about the role of administrative and coercive state and their relation to citizen safety, security, and well being. This deeply empirical account of municipal takeover in Flint, Michigan demonstrates how managerial governance can be used to advance elite interests. But Nichol, Nichols also points to the role of community activists in identifying the space between public administration and politics. Nichols shows the importance of monitoring administration in the name of democracy and speaking to power to fulfill its promise. Congratulations. The APSA, IPSA Theodore Lowy Award, supported by the International Political Science Association, recognizes the author of a first book in any field of political science that exemplifies qualities of broad ambition, high originality, and intellectual daring showing promise of having a substantive impact on the overall discipline. This year's prize goes to Rachel Augustine Potter for her book, Bending the Rules, Procedural Politicking in the Bureaucracy. Bending the Rules explores how unelected bureaucrats leverage procedures in order to exercise influence in the policy-making process of Congress, the president and courts. Potter represents a very innovative argument about bureaucratic discretion the empirical findings of this book draw from multiple methodologies and accumulated cross-field research. The book illuminates in an excellent way our understanding of how government policy decisions are made by public agencies. Congratulations. The Victoria Shuck Award is given for the best book published in the previous calendar year on women in politics and is presented to Melody Ellis Baldini for her book, The Inclusion Calculation, Why Men Appropriate Women's Representation. This book changes the way we think about gender and politics. The book shifts the focus to the institutional, structural, and cultural factors that impact women's representation to the interests and incentives of male gatekeepers. She asks why and under what circumstances do the members of the in-group allow and even encourage members of the out-group to be in the government? 
While she acknowledges that there may be some angels who work for gender equality, even if it is not in their own interests, politicians are rational opportunists who do not explicitly oppose women in politics, but also do not actively work towards inclusion. She argues that women's representation is a result of a calculation of the costs and benefits to male gatekeepers of including women. The costs of inclusion include the displacement of incumbents, threat to the power and resources of the current male elite, and the potentially negative electoral impact of women candidates. Because of the perceived incongruity of stereotypical female characteristics with government. Responsiveness to social movement demands and international pressure may create costs or benefits for including women. The inclusion calculation can change dramatically if there is a crisis of legitimacy. When parties lose legitimacy because of corruption scandals or the undermining of democratic practices, stereotypical female characteristics become more valuable and the costs associated with including women decline. In such a context, stereotypical female characteristics become an asset rather than a liability in the inclusion calculation. The framing helps provide a unified theoretical explanation for many of the empirical findings of existing research into representation, stereotypes, political parties, and corruption. The empirical chapters provide brief case studies and statistical analyses to illustrate the effect of corruption scandals and declining democratic rights on the inclusion calculation. The book is clearly written and accessible to a wide range of readers. The committee believes that one asset of this book is the likelihood that it will launch important new scholarship. We hope that the framework will be extended to develop intersectional analyses of representation. The components of the inclusion calculation are clearly and persuasively articulated. They can easily be adapted to a wide range of circumstances and tested in many different ways. We believe this book will usher in an important new research program for the study of women's representation. Congratulations, Melody. Our next awardee is a recipient of both the Gladys M. Camera Award and the Woodrow Wilson Foundation Award. The first award is given for the best political science publication in the field of US national politics. The Woodrow Wilson Foundation Award supported by Princeton University is given for the best book published in the US during the previous calendar year on government, politics, or international affairs. This year, both of these awards are presented to Amy E. Lerman for her book, Good Enough for Government Work, The Public Reputation Crisis in America and What We Can Do to Fix It. Lerman offers one of the most riveting books to date on how the government's reputation can shape citizens' perceptions on public policy and governmental services. The book is an engaging read that is well argued, clearly developed, and flawlessly executed. It deftly integrates a framework that has long been applied to understanding how businesses craft their reputations among consumers and uses it to explain why much of the public is so reluctant to turn to the federal government to solve its problems. Using an impressive combination of longitudinal survey data and experiments, Lerman convincingly demonstrates that the government's poor reputation doesn't merely manifest in poor evaluations from citizens, but that it also has practical consequences by leading Americans to opt out of government run programs altogether. It is an impressive work which engenders rethinking regarding the interplay between public attitudes and policy outcomes. The insights are particularly apt for understanding the current COVID-19 crisis, both in terms of how the public takes a skeptical view of what government can actually do to help, but also for how the crisis may further damage the reputation in the future for the government. The committee unanimously selected Lerman's book, Good Enough for Government Work, as the winner of the Woodrow Wilson Award as well. This is a beautifully written, carefully composed book Lerman explores how the reputation of government is itself an impediment to the government's ability to achieve the common good. When people have persistently negative views about government and these views are resistant to change, people may opt out of public goods, thus reducing their quality and resulting in a self-fulfilling prophecy of negative views about government programs. Drawing on social psychology, public opinion research, and crisis management in the business world, Lerman analyzes these questions in a creative and compelling way. The book combines evidence from survey experiments that isolate the key treatment of interest, field experiments that leverage a partnership with Health Sherpa to compare signup rates with healthcare.gov, 
to test how framing the policy as publicly or privately provided affects policy uptake, and quasi-natural experiments comparing Princeton Township and Princeton Borough, as well as different sized dwellings in Chicago to study people's actual experiences with publicly versus privately provided waste management services. The committee came away from reading Lerman's book feeling like we had acquired a nugget of truth about how the world works. This masterful book provides valuable insights for scholars and policymakers. Lerman achieves the gold standard for rigorous research using cutting edge methods while presenting the work in a way that makes it accessible and compelling. Congratulations, Amy. We now turn to our outstanding career award winners. The APSA Distinguished Award of Civic and Community Engagement honors significant civic or community engagement activity by a political science person who merges knowledge and practice and has impact outside of the profession or the academy. The inaugural recipient is Mark M. Howard for his work on Prisons and Justice Initiative. While we are lucky to have many outstanding nominees representing a diverse and impactful array of civic and community engagement efforts for this first year of award selection, the committee felt that Professor Howard's work had uniquely manifested into a set of overlapping and interrelated impacts, local and national, individual and institutional, driven by a unified mission focused on addressing systemic injustices and promoting greater social equity. The Georgetown Prisons and Justice Initiative, which Professor Howard founded in 2016 and presently leads, was created in order to respond to the dual crisis of incarceration and recidivism. It brings together leading scholars, practitioners, and students to tackle the problem of mass incarceration, one of the most crucial moral and political issues of our time. The initiative has several prongs, including a course taught in the District of Columbia Jail that brings together students from Georgetown and those incarcerated. It also offers a lecture series and credit bearing study group that provides a pathway to a bachelor's degree in, uh, at the DC jail known as the Prison Scholars Program. Also included is the Georgetown Pivot Program, which incorporates compensated job training, academic courses, and internships for newly released prisoners. Professor Howard also played a key role in working with the DC Mayor's Office and Returning and Citizens Affairs and its partners to create groundbreaking paralegal fellowship program that trains, certifies, and employs previously incarcerated men and women for paralegal positions in local high profile law firms. Letters of support also showcase Howard's personal involvement and advocacy for many of those wrongly convicted, going on to serve as a mentor for these individuals, something to which they personally attest. The committee also commends the strength of his related research and teaching and highlights the fact that his impactful applied work is informed by and informs his research, including his 2017 book, Unusually Cruel, Prisons, Punishment, and the Real American Exceptionalism. We applaud Professor Howard's work on the Georgetown Prison Justice Initiative and look forward to his future work in this area. As the awardee, in addition to $1,000 honorarium, APSA and the Task Force on New Partnerships will also provide funds for Professor Howard to organize an activity to advance civic and community engagement within the discipline at the 2021 annual meeting. Congratulations, Mark. The APSA Community College Faculty Award honors exemplary contributions that advance the multifaceted goals of community college faculty. The inaugural award goes to Aaron Richards of Cascadia College. Aaron is simply an outstanding example of a dedicated community college professor and engaged member of the APSA. She's a tireless advocate for community college faculty, an empathetic mentor and inspired teacher. A skilled networker who has assisted countless colleagues in their professional development, we are so pleased to give her this award. After receiving a BA in political science from Mount Holyoke College, Professor Richards continued graduate studies at Washington State University. Since 2007, she has been on the faculty at Cascadia College in Washington, where she currently serves as the Division Coordinator of Social Sciences. In addition to her duties as Division Coordinator, she serves on the college's Program Assessment Committee and the Human Participants Research Review Board. She also serves as a political science liaison with a local high school and college coordinator for the political science discipline. Professor Richards is an innovative and collaborative teacher who has worked with multiple programs and departments. 
Professor Richards collaborated with colleagues from other departments to create a Bachelor of Applied Science in Sustainable Practices, an interdisciplinary degree focused on teaching students how to help organizations utilize sustainability strategies. She created the courses related to environmental policy and politics and teaches them as part of the program. Professor Richards is truly a mentor to her colleagues and is responsible for bringing dozens of community college faculty to the APSA. She has supported faculty in joining committees, presenting at conferences, and advocating for the community colleges within the association and the discipline at large. She's a fixture at the annual meeting and teaching and learning conferences and actively reaches out to new faculty, welcomes them to the organization, and finds ways to get them engaged. In 2017, Professor Richards was the first community college faculty to be elected to the APSA Council, and last year she was a key mover in getting the Community College Caucus organized. Professor Richards has also been active professionally in the Pacific Northwest region, serving on the Executive Committee of the Pacific Northwest Political Science Association, including terms as Secretary and President. Congratulations, Erin. The APSA Distinguished Teaching Award honors contributions to undergraduate and graduate teaching at both the two and four year institutions. This year's recipient is Peter Lindsay, Professor of Political Science and Philosophy at Georgia State University. Dr. Lindsay's record is distinguished by three prominent and exceptional qualities. First, his dedication to teaching and learning is exhibited across multiple academic audiences throughout the community. Based on two years of independent teaching in jails and prisons, Dr. Lindsay co-founded the Georgia State Prison Education Project in 2016, where he teaches in state and federal penitentiaries and halfway houses and creates opportunities for interaction between current or former inmates and Georgia State University students. He's also taught in high schools and nursing homes. Nominators praise the sincere curiosity that he brings to the exploration of thorny moral and policy questions within these various settings and applaud his authenticity, candor, directness, expertise, and compassion. As a teacher and scholar, Dr. Lindsay bridges the academic world and the practical concerns that animate philosophical principles. Second, Dr. Lindsay has produced original scholarship on the practice of teaching and has done so in addition to a vibrant record of scholarly publication in the subfield of political philosophy. His 2018 book, The Craft of University Teaching, University of Toronto Press, is evidence of a thoughtful approach to innovation based on experiences with diverse audiences, and nominators comment that his scholarship of teaching and learning demonstrates a deep and sustained attention to what effective teaching can achieve. He has been a lifelong student and respected resources on pedagogical approaches. He generously shares his perspectives with colleagues and peers across the country and around the world. Finally, Dr. Lindsay's teaching uh, excellence record has been sustained over a long period of time. Dr. Lindsay has received numerous accolades throughout his career, including the Georgia Board of Regents Hall of Fame Teaching Award, which spans all 37 campuses of the University System of Georgia. As one nominator writes, he has instilled the habit of critical thought and philosophical inquiry in a generation of students, many of whom happened into his classroom on the strength of his reputation as a teacher and left with a deep appreciation of the practical importance of classical political theory in the daily practice of politics. For these reasons, Dr. Pin Peter Lindsay exemplifies excellence in teaching and is richly deserving of this additional honor, the 2020 APSA Distinguished Teaching Award. Congratulations, Peter. The John Gauss Award is given to honor the recipient's lifetime of exemplary scholarship in the joint tradition of political science and public administration. The 2020 award is presented to John Bryson, the McKnight Presidential Professor of Planning and Public Affairs at the Hubert Humphrey School of Public Affairs at the University of Minnesota. The Gauss Lecture will be held on Friday, September 11th, 2020, at 6.30 Eastern time as part of the virtual APSA annual meeting and exhibition. We look forward to you joining us. Professor Bryson has not only made innovative, impressive, and indelible scholarly contributions to the study and practice of political science and public administration and stimulated an advanced scholarship in public administration, but has inspired practice in important and meaningful ways. Professor Bryson's scholarly contributions integrate our aspirations for democratic inclusion and representation 
with organizational capacity building, sustainability, and flexibility to translate aspirations into actions. Motivated to understand how people in government and nonprofit settings figure out what they think they ought to want and how to get it, and how to help them do so. Professor Bryson's work demonstrates that it is not enough to lead strategically across boundaries, sectors, and jurisdictions, and to take action collaboratively with multiple stakeholders, but that service in the public and nonprofit sectors in particular requires continuous questioning and grappling with the creation of public value. From the award-winning five edition book, Strategic Planning for Public and Nonprofit Organizations, to award-winning Leadership for the Common Good, co-authored with Barbara Crosby, to the most downloaded paper in International Public Management Journal since its 2009 publication, Understanding Strategic Planning and the Formation and Implementation of Strategic Plans as a Way of Knowing, Professor Bryson's work continuously advances theory with the clarity of context and circumstances that is informed by years of applying his work to the governing challenges in Minnesota, North America, and across the globe. Books and journal articles abound, each with quality of purpose and insight that is widely recognized through nearly 22,000 citations and awards too numerous to list. In a year of pandemic and protest, of deep divisions and distrust, where technology connects us but a shared vision eludes us, Professor Bryson's work provides the framework and tools for doing the hard work of tackling our problems one step at a time, building consensus around thoughtful solutions, and seeing the value of difficult collaboration as the fabric of our democracy. The John Gauss Award and Lectureship Committee is delighted to recognize a scholar for our times and all times, Professor John M. Bryson. Congratulations, John. The Hubert H. Humphrey Award is given in recognition of notable public service by a political scientist and is presented to Governor Tom Wolf. Tom Wolf is the 47th governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, a position he has held since 2015. Wolf is an extraordinary example of a successful private sector executive who is able to make the difficult leap to high public office. His excellence in public service underscores the importance of bringing experienced business leaders into government, since they are often highly effective in boosting economic growth for the people of their states. Dr. Wolf has a wonderfully diverse background. After growing up in York County, he attended college at Dartmouth, but took a break to join the Peace Corps, serving as an agricultural worker in India. After his work in the Corps, he returned to Dartmouth, finished his studies, and went on to earn a master's degree at the University of London. He then enrolled at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he earned a doctorate in the Department of Political Science. His award-winning dissertation is entitled Congressional Sea Change, Conflict and Organizational Accommodation in the House of Representatives, 1878 to 1921. Instead of pursuing an academic position, Dr. Wolf decided instead to return to his small hometown and join the family lumber distribution business. There, he had to start low in the organization and work his way to higher positions. He once quipped, I was the only PhD forklift operator in York County at the time, I'm pretty sure. Over the years, he rose in the company and eventually bought the business in 1985. He sold the business to serve as Secretary of Revenue under Governor Rendell in 2005. After three years, he again bought the Wolf organization and led it back to success from difficult times, diversifying production and improving conditions for the large workforce. Dr. Wolf has been a successful governor, restoring funds to education, supporting small business, and expanding Medicaid to cover hundreds of thousands who are without health insurance. He has made the fight against opioid addiction a high priority, working with the medical community on imaginative ways to reduce dependence and save lives. Like all governors in the United States today, Dr. Wolf has been faced with the most extraordinary health and financial challenges since the Great Depression. Pennsylvania has been a steady, rational leader in managing the epidemic. As of this writing in May 2020, over 45,000 people in Pennsylvania have contracted COVID-19, and the governor has responded with powerful, clear, science-based guidance for citizens of his state. We feel as though Dr. Wolf brings together a strong strategic sensibility, tremendous empathy, 
and thoughtfulness in his leadership. He is a stellar Humphrey awardee for our times, exemplifying how well a doctorate in political science can lead to a proud life in public service. Congratulations, Tom. The James Madison Award is presented every three years to honor an American political scientist who has made distinguished scholarly contributions to political science. This year's recipient is John J. Mersheimer, the R. Wendell Harrison Distinguished Professor of Political Science at the University of Chicago. He has taught there since 1982. The Madison Lecture will be held on Thursday, September 12th as part of the virtual APSA annual meeting and exhibition. Mearsheimer is widely recognized as one of the leading international relations scholars in the world and a prominent public intellectual. He has written six books, including the very influential The Tragedy of Great Power Politics and dozens of scholarly articles in leading journals. He is one of the most cited international relations scholars in the discipline, but his works are well read beyond the academy as well. Congratulations, John. The Kerry McWilliams Award is given to honor a major journalistic contribution to our understanding of politics and is presented to Judy Woodruff and Gwen Eiffel posthumously of PBS NewsHour. In 2013, Judy Woodruff and Gwen Eiffel, an award-winning black journalist who passed away in 2016, shortly after the, the election, were the first women to co-anchor a network broadcast. According to Katie Rogers, writing in the New York Times, the PBS program is distinctive for a number of reasons beyond being the first to be co-anchored by two talented women. Aside from its slower paced broadcast, NewsHour is distinct for another reason. Its newsroom is majority female. 59 journalists are women and 55 are men. The anchor and executive producer are women. Many of the program's regular contributors are women. Several NewsHour journalists say this has created a more diverse report. Gwen Eiffel was an award-winning national political journalist who co-hosted and managed the CBS NewsHour from 2013 until illness prevented her from continuing. In commenting on her extraordinary life and accomplishments in a PBS NewsHour report, President Obama praised her for her work as a journalist and as a role model and said that she has done her country a great service. After graduating from Simpsons University, Eiffel's early career in the press included working with the Washington Post and later the New York Times, where she covered the White House. She moved to NBC in 1994 and in 1999, she became the first black woman to host a national talk show as a moderator of the PBS program, Washington Week in Review. She moderated the 2008 and 2004 vice presidential debates. Eiffel's book, The Breakthrough, Politics and Race in the Age of Obama was published on January 20th, 2009, the day President Obama was inaugurated. She has received numerous awards for her work in journalism and was also the recipient of more than 20 honorary doctorates. This year, she was also honored on a US postage stamp. Judy Woodruff is the current anchor and managing editor of PBS NewsHour, working as a broadcast journalist since her graduation from Duke University in 1968, where she was a political science major, Woodruff has reported on every U.S. presidential election since 1976. After working in local television news in Atlanta, Woodruff reported on Jimmy Carter's presidential campaign for NBC in 1976. She became a White House correspondent for NBC shortly after President Carter's inauguration and moved to Washington, D.C. Her book, This is Judy Woodruff at the White House, published in 1983, describes her work as a reporter. She moved to PBS in 1983, where she reported on national politics and hosted Frontline with Judy Woodruff and moderated the 1988 vice presidential debate. In 1993, Woodruff moved to CNN, where she reported on national and international politics and served as co-anchor for special coverage of events such as 9-11, the war in Af Afghanistan, and the Iraq War. After leaving CNN in 2005, and semesters conducted research at the Shorenstein Center on Media, Politics, and Public Policy and teaching at the Sanford School of Public Policy at Duke, she hosted a monthly news program on Bloomberg Television called Conversations with Judy Woodruff. Woodruff returned to PBS in 2006 to work on what was then called the News Hour with Jim Lair as senior correspondent and was a rotating anchor of the program until 2013 when she became co-anchor of the News Hour with Glenn Eiffel. Woodruff is the recipient of numerous awards, including honorary degrees from Duke University and the University of Pennsylvania. She also elected member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the Council on Foreign Relations. Heartfelt congratulations. 
The Barbara Sinclair Lecture is supported by the Center for Congressional and Presidential Studies at American University School of Public Affairs. It honors achievement in promoting the understanding of the US Congress and legislative politics. This year's winner is Richard L. Hall. The Sinclair Lecture is scheduled to take place this November, and I hope you'll all be able to join. Professor Rick Hall is an esteemed scholar studying the wide range of issues involved in making sense of Congress. His work exemplifies the criteria for this award, promoting an understanding of US Congress and legislative politics. In selecting this year's Barbara Sinclair Lecturer, the selection committee particularly noted that Rick's book, Participation in Congress, which won the American Political Science Association's 1997 Richard Fenno Prize, provides a foundation upon which a successive generation of legislative scholars have built their own research. Participation in Congress remains an essential part of the legislative studies canon, alongside and in the spirit of Barbara Sinclair's book, Unorthodox Lawmaking. Both help us to understand the impact of institutional structures and rules on policy outcomes and on the political behavior of members of Congress. Rick earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Iowa and his master's and PhD from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Upon completing his PhD, he took a faculty position at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, where he has continued his work. Rick's scholarship is cited frequently, and in addition to winning the Fennel Prize, has been recognized with the American Political Science Association's Jack Walker Award, as well as the Midwest Political Science Association's Pi Sigma Alpha Award. In 1987 to 88, Rick served as an American Political Science Association Congressional Fellow in the office of Senator Tom Daschle. And over the course of his career, his scholarship has reflected the deep insider understanding of the ways in which Congress works, which has fostered his research as one of the most authoritative. One nominator wrote, on each topic he works on, his research is on certain policies or why interest groups wield power in Congress, we consistently return to Rick's research as foundational arguments that help provide the answers. Without Rick's insights, our basic understanding of Congress and multiple issues would be wanting. Congratulations, Rick. Our final presentation for tonight is the Frank J. Goodnow Award, which honors service to the community of teachers, researchers, and public servants who work in the many fields of politics. Our honoree is M. Kent Jennings of the University of California, Santa Barbara. Professor Jennings has had a distinguished career of service to the political science community. He's been an intellectual leader in the field and has mentored many of today's leading scholars. Jennings was president of the American Political Science Association from 1997 to 1998 and has served APSA on a variety of committees, including, among others, the Program Committee and Committee on the Status of Women. He has been a member of multiple editorial boards, including the American Journal of Political Science, the Journal of Politics, Public Opinion Quarterly, and Women in Politics. He was also president of the International Society of Political Psychology and vice president of the Midwest Political Science Association. Jennings founded the Inter-University Consortium for Political Science Research as one of the co-founders and served for 20 years as Associate Director of ICPSR. He was also a founding member of the International Society for Political Psychology, ISPP, and shares the credit for creating an international infrastructure that brings together political psychologists from multiple disciplines and provides a journal, annual meeting, and annual training workshops. For these efforts, Jennings received the Warren E. Miller Prize for Outstanding Career of Intellectual Achievement and Service to the Profession from APSA's Section on Elections, Public Opinion, and Voting Behavior. He also received the Miller Award for Meritorious Service to the Social Sciences from ICPSR and the Nevitt Sanford Award for Distinguished Contribution to Political Psychology from ISPP. Professor Jennings has been a leader in the fields of political socialization, political psychology, and women in politics. His books and numerous articles in leading journals of political science opened the field to the study of the early sources of political attitudes and behavior and the changes in those attitudes and behavior over time. The significance of his scholarship has been recognized by his election to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and prestigious fellowships at the Center for Advanced Studies and the Netherlands Institute 
for advanced studies. Generations of doctoral students have benefited from Jennings mentorship, especially a large number of female scholars. When there are few women in the field and when they face significant obstacles to professional success, Jennings fostered their careers, bringing them in as research assistants and co-authors. And in doing so, he supported the first generation of gender and politics scholars, helping to support the creation of a new subfield in the profession. For this, he was named Mentor of Distinction twice by the Women's Caucus for Political Science. In recognition of his years of service to the profession for his pathbreaking scholarship and his mentorship of scores of early career scholars, we are so pleased to name Professor Jennings as a recipient of the Frank J. Goodnow Award. Congratulations, Kent. Thank you for joining us to recognize some of the best in the best in our discipline. An amazing pluralistic discipline. The work honored here is memorable and impactful. Thank you for taking time to join us. Janet, thank you very much for the presentation of the awards and congratulations to all of our winners. Please enjoy the rest of the conference and the APSA staff is also happy to answer any questions. Thank you.